Hi guys, nice to see you here today in our studio. Today we have front end news for you. My name is Olga and Bartosz. Hello guys, we have seven news for you from the front end world. The first news is Node version 18. Another news will be Jest version 28. Then Figma plugin for Storybook. Then we're gonna talk about TypeScript 4.7 beta. We will also talk about React Redux version 8. Then we're gonna talk about React Native 0.68. And Firefox 100. So let's go! News. The first news will be Node.js version 18 and what's the most important things in it. So the most breaking change is a V8 engine upgrade to version 10.1. So let's start from speaking about this update, which is basically the part of Chromium 101. Shortly, it adds a find last and find last index array methods. Then we have improvements to the ENTL local API. And the most important thing is improved performance of class fields and private class methods. Uh, it means that initialization of them is now much more faster. The next things uh, regarding Node.js version 18, which we would like to mention, is set of new globally available browser compatible APIs. So we have now global fetch API available by default in the Node.js core. Uh, although it will be experimental for now, uh, until more test coverage is added, you can now try it out on your own. Did uh, you already? No. <laughs> 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 yes. Uh, the next API added in version 18 is WebStreams API, also in experimental stage. It means that we have now access globally to methods like uh, writable stream, readable stream, transform stream, and others. You can basically check out all the links and uh, accessible streams in the official Node.js uh, website. What is more about the new version of Node.js? We have also now test runner module in experimental stage, which facilitates the creation of JavaScript tests. We can uh, use it now by import it with node prefix. Besides that, we have also toolchain and compiler upgrades. That's it uh, for the first news? Yes, that's it. And we can now switch for the next news, next which news. is... Yeah, which is just 28 comes with really long requested features and breaking changes. And we are uh, gonna speak about some of them. Cool. So let's go. Let's speak about them. Yeah. So firstly, we got sharding of test run. Uh, what basically does it mean? It means that we have now shard CLI command option, which allows us to run parts of our test across different multiple machines. It's really one of the just oldest requested features from community. The next thing which we are going to talk about is package.json exports. So with just version 28, we have now full support of exports, which was previously introduced uh, and minimally shipped in version 27.3, uh, when it supported only the main entry points. Uh, now it provides node and node add-on condition and browser condition. And this basically resolves once and for all one of the most biggest comp compatibility issues of Jest. Another feature regarding the latest version of Jest is ability to customize the behavior of fake timers. Just for your remind reminder, fake timers were previously introduced as a concept in version 26 of Jest then in version 27 was made by default and in just uh, 28 we have now full implementation through both configuration and runtime apis there are also plenty of other new features with uh, which we can highlight for you uh, so we have also something like github actions reporter some new ecmascript modules added asynchronous resolvers and setup files some extensions and improvements regarding using just with typescript and custom plugins and much more and if you guys want, you can check the full list of the new features and improvements on the official Jest website. All links will be in the description. So we're gonna switch now for the third news. And the third news is Storybook. Yes, it's Storybook Connect for Figma, to be exact. And it's a plugin which links Storybook stories with Figma designs. 
What is this about? It basically helps us as developers and um, designers compare implementation to design specifications and definitely speeds up handoff and UI review processes. So we're gonna speak about some core features provided with this new plugin. Which one is your favorite? My favorite is a possibility to link stories to component variants. So it will be the first which we're gonna talk about. And by this feature, you can link assets once and they automatically stay up to date with the latest version of design or implementation. And this- Sounds great. Yes, and this link uh, also propagates to all component instances. So basically you are able to share everything across the team and other devs or designers don't have to link components over and over again. The next uh, feature, uh, which I'm gonna mention, is uh, that we can hand off design specifications to developers for implementation directly, because the plugin streamlines handoff by calling out which design components have already been implemented directly. You can use it in the Figma sidebar. Then after the process, uh, we can speak about third feature. So you as a developer can gather feedback on UI implementation for uh, designers. Uh, the plugin helps designers check whether the uh, rendered implemented UI matches the design via storybook add-on so they can sign off that implementations meets the design specifications. And they then they can compare dimensions and spacing, colors and other things regarding DOM elements to design specifications. The fourth news is about TypeScript uh, 4.7. Yes, this is our next point from our uh, news lineup. And you can now basically uh, install TypeScript 4.7 in beta version and test the new features and changes. We will now highlight a few of them for you. The first one is uh, ECMAScript module support. So uh, basically we have now ECMAScript module support in Node.js. Uh, the latest version of TypeScript added this modules functionality with two new module settings. So it's Node 12 and Node Next, which brings a few high-level features. The first one, which we're gonna talk about, is Type in Packet JSON and the new extensions which it brings. Now Node.js supports a new settings in package JSON called type and it can be set either to module or common JS. These settings control whether JS files are interpreted as ES modules or common JS modules and uh, it is set by default to common JS when nothing is set. The next one uh, which I'm gonna talk about is control flow analysis for computed properties. It basically means that the TypeScript 4.7 now analyzes the type of computed properties and narrows them correctly. Another thing which we're gonna talk about is improved function inference in objects and methods. TypeScript 4.7 can now perform more granular inferences from functions within objects and arrays. This narrows the types of these functions to consistently flow in a left to right manner, just like for a plain argument. The last one which we're gonna talk about is object method snippet completions. Uh, so TypeScript now provides snippet completions for object literal methods. Uh, when completing um, members in an object, TypeScript we provide a typical completion entry for just the name of a method along with a separate completion entry for the full method definition. There are other things in TypeScript 4.7 beta which you can see on the official TypeScript website. So now we can move to the fifth news which is React Redux version 8. And there are some major updates regarding compatibility with the latest version of React 18 which came up last month. So the first big updates are for use selector uh, connect and provider for compatibility with React version 18. Basically, the updates are all about uh, these above mentioned hooks and methods for compatibility with the latest version of React. So the public API is basically still the same. So we can use, for example, use selector or use dispatch hooks the same way, but the updated parts are the internals uh, to use the new use sync external store hook from the latest version of React. Next thing which is improved in React Redux version 8 is SSR and hydration. So there are some crucial updates regarding support for server-side rendering and hydration, which is also React 18 
new feature. React 18 basically introduced a new hydrate root method for hydrating the UI on the client in the server side rendering. React Redux in version 8 supports this by adding a new server state prop for provider and basically if you are using server side rendering in your project you should just pass your state to provider to ensure that there are no hydration mismatch errors. The last thing, and uh, in my opinion the biggest one, is the TypeScript migration and support. So it is the big update from React Redux, and we know that this library source code was always written in plain JS, and the community maintained typing separately as external type package. So you can you have to also install it manually and add it to your project. Now the React Redux team migrated the React Redux code base to TypeScript using the existing typings as starting points and that basically means that we no longer need to add types slash React Redux package and we can get rid of all of it as a dependency. I think it's uh, great news, right? Yes. <clears throat> it's really oh, great no. news. And there are, of course, some other updates, uh, new features and bug fixes and you can also check all of these out in React Redux official GitHub page. And in description. And now we're gonna tell you shortly something about React Native version 0 0.68, right? 68? Yes, 68. Uh, and uh, version bumps in it. Yeah, there are some changes and version bumps in it and what it exactly brings up. So the first thing is updated version of Node to version 16, so the latest LTS. So with the new version of React Native, the team have updated version of Node to 16th, it means that as on CI React Native team test for LTS and the previous LTS, users are now forced to use a version of Node higher or equal than version 14. The next thing is Android Gradle plugin updated to version 7.0.1 and the new version of React Native enforces JDK, JDK 11 for Android builds, so we all have to make sure and upgrade our configuration. The official website recommends Zulu 11 for it. Besides that, in the latest version of React Native, you can optionally enable and see how the new introduced architecture works and we have support for the fabric renderer and turbo module system in it. This marks a crucial milestone for the rollout of the new React Native architecture. You can basically check out the full list of changes and bug fixes in the official React Native website. And last but not least is Firefox 100. Starting from 2004 uh, from version 1, Firefox now reached version 100 is over 18 years of constant development and improvements wow. by the team. And what in the new version? The first one is an improvement on Android and iOS regarding history. History and tabs are now clutter-free. And what does it mean? For clutter-free history, uh, instead of endless sea of URLs leaving, we have it now organized in an intuitive way. One of the ways the Firefox team have done it is by grouping history items by the original item. Uh, another way they organized it is uh, by removing duplicate size to reduce the visual clutter. Lastly, you can now also search within your history. Another news for Firefox, especially on Android, is that now you can get more regarding using private HTTPS only mode. So Android app users could now benefit from this privacy first feature, uh, HTTPS only mode. Unfortunately for now, it's only available for Android. Devices. The last thing uh, which I'm gonna mention is a credit card auto autofill option and it's interesting feature because previously it was launched only in North America and now uh, Firefox team extended in, in the United Kingdom, France and Germany so we in Poland have to wait a little bit for it. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing to do, we'll wait. <laughs> and that's it for today, right? Yes, that's it. That's all the news for today. Yeah. I hope you liked it. Follow our channel, give thumbs up if you like the video and leave comments. Thank you so much. Thank Fa you, Bartosz. Thank you very much, Olga. High five. High five. <laughs>